Hello everybody and welcome to the first game of Group C. Today we have Renzi from Canada, which is around 760, versus Dark Polygon from Japan, which is around 100 more on rating. They both mostly use Jake and they are using Jake on this map. They ban Sammy and they both banned a bunch of maps here, so there wasn't a lot of of possible maps for this game, but they are playing on Assassin's, so let's get the game started. And this map, Assassin's, the main feature is the, the tank, of course. There is this pipe scene that you have to break in order for your tank to escape, but it takes around, I think, four or five turns to break the pipe scene, so the enemy can just get a, an artillery and deal with the, the tank. And generally, that's what players do. But sometimes people try doing some different stuff. Some people go for, for max as well, but the max take some damage back, so I don't know if it's worth it, probably not. Unless you really don't want to go for artillery, but this map has some, some good places for artillery on those woods here. And right now Reigns is going for the early artillery on day 4. Dark Polygon is capturing a few bases. And Dark Polygon goes for an, an early recon. I don't know about that. Let's see if this recon gets something done. Right now, Reigns is getting ready to shoot at this tank. So he can't escape from the, the pipe scene. Dark Porygon is moving in with his recon on his strong side. He's also moving his infantry. He's try starting to capture here. But this tank is is getting close to uh, killing this pipe scene actually. And only now Dark Porygon gets his artillery on day 5, the end of day 5, but next turn Renzi already is gonna have killed his tank here. And right now they're both just capturing. Going for those early game captures and Renzi goes for a tank on his strong side and the mech here. I think it makes sense because the mech can kinda move normally through this river. Finally Dark Porygon has the, the artillery on position but the pipe scene is gonna be broken pretty soon so I don't know if he's gonna get this tank. He also goes for a, uh, a tank on his strong side. Now Renzi gets rid of the, the tank of Dark Porygon. So I guess Dark Porygon already is behind on, on unit value and count because he lost this tank. Renzi is going for the airport capture, he also has some infantry here to start capturing those other properties near his, his HQ and he went for another artillery action. Now Dark Porygon is starting to capture, he takes a shot at the tank, but the tank already broke the pipe scene here. And he's gonna have to put this infantry on the road to just to stop Renzi from escaping with the tank. He also can't shoot the next turn, the artillery, if the tank is gonna try to stick, escape here, attacking this uh, infantry, so I think Dark Porygon is in a bit of trouble right now. He goes for another tank on his strong side, but even after that they are pretty much even on army value, so I think Renzi is already ahead. Renzi gets the... The airport and he has the cone tower already. Dark Porygon is starting to capture his cone tower. He has this recon here. Which is nice I think, but he didn't get any damage for now. So I don't know if it was worth to get this early recon. Renzi actually is getting 
those middle captures here. Um, actually, he's a bit, a little bit behind Dark Porygon in those captures because Dark Porygon already has those two bases. They're the mirror of those two. The Recon finally moves in for Dark Porygon doing some damage in, and interrupting this capture near the HQ. So right now Dark Porygon is a bit ahead here. The infantry moves here, so now the tank is actually free. <laughs> this tank moves in and kills this infantry, which means this tank can come here and attack this other infantry. And this tank, okay, it can reach the, the tank on the woods, but Dark Porygon is gonna need to see this tank first. Renzi is getting some captures, the mech is moving in slowly here. So I was saying that Dark Porygon has a better presence here on the center with the better captures, but I don't know if it has a better presence because right now Renzi has already two tanks here and he gets a better copter as well. Interesting. Right now Dark Porygon gets trapped by this tank. I think he didn't watch the replay because he knew that this tank was here, I think, because he just killed his infantry. If he had seen this tank here, he probably could have destroyed it with his own tank, though he would take some damage back afterwards. Now he's going for those aggressive captures here on the top, re really near his opponent's HQ. The tank's coming in on his base. He has another tank, so he has a, a tank chain on his strong side. He goes for the anti-air, which is really good because Renzi just got a battle copter. Renzi kills the recon with his own tank that was on his weak side for some reason. I guess Dark Warrior also has a tank going to his weak side. He's pulling back the, the tank from the pipes to repair here. He's also making uh, an infantry wall here for it. Getting his artillery closer to the front lines. And the, he also has a recon, I didn't catch when he made one. But now he has a, a recon on his strong side. And he also made some anti-air. I guess expecting a battle copter from Dark Porygon on the right here. Dark Porygon finally is getting some vision on, around his HQ. I know some players like putting artillery around here and really going for an early HQ capture if they get some type of lead. So let's see if that happens in this game, but right now both players are really focusing on the center, I think. Dark Porygon actually makes a pretty big infantry wall here as well. Even though it's a bit far away, like both players are a bit scared, I think, of moving in on the center. They're just building up for a big conflict there, I think. Reigns is moving his infantry a bit here, but I don't know if this infantry is just for vision, it probably will just die next turn. The Battlecopter goes toward the center. The anti-air is trying to reach here as well. He starts this capture. The mech is moving in as well. He's sort of making a, a wall here again. The, the tank from the pipe scene is still repairing. He pulls back a bit more so he can get the, the artillery closer to the front lines. This tank is kind of hiding, I guess, on, on this road, on those roads here, and he gets another battlecopter and a tank. The entire from Dark Porygon is going closer to his big wall here, big wall of Japan, I guess. He interrupts this capture, really nice. He also gets some damage, but it's a bit worrying because all these infantry are on roads here. Now he's gonna move his vehicles, let's see if he puts the, the artillery here to get some shots. The tanks are moving in, the the battlecopter he made is trying to, to go towards the center I think as well. The tanks go first and then he has the artillery here. I guess he reaches this base so it makes sense, it's also the, 
those protected behind those things. Now Reigns is going in, killing some infantry here from Dark Porygon that's a bit overextended, I think. The Recon gets some nice damage on this infantry. The Mech as well is attacking this infantry, he's gonna kill one infantry. I don't know if this artillery shot... Yeah, I mean, it did shoot something, but I'm not sure what, actually. Or if just... Oh, okay, he killed the, the infantry of that one. It was very early on, on the turn. Now he starts... Okay, he doesn't start capturing, that would be a bit weird, since there's so much fighting going on here. He also kills one unit here. And this infantry is gonna heal to 10 again. He also gets this tank with the battlecopter and the, the tank, the pipes in tank is joining now. The battle. And two more tanks that he built are coming from his weak side. And he actually bo broke this pipe scene. I didn't even catch when that happened. But I guess this is really nice. Now he can get units here way faster. And Dark Porygons go for the beatdown, the first power of the game. I guess if he gets, I think, one extra movement on vehicles and some extra plane bonus. I don't think he gets the range, he's only the, the super power. I think Jake will get some range on his artillery. He kills the, the battlecopter, really nice. He also is getting more tanks here, but he doesn't have this pipe scene broken, so if he had, he could be here almost already, but now he's gonna take this long way through here. The tank moves in, does some damage to this infantry. Right now the problem I think is that the artillery from Renzi can reach Dark Paragon's tanks. And this artillery can only reach this 3 HP tank, they probably won't even be here anymore. The anti-air gets the battlecopter, this tank almost dies to this artillery here. I mean, was it? I think it was the the other tank, but whatever. He's killing more stuff here. And actually, Renzi already has almost a 10 unit advantage, I didn't even catch that because they are so close in army value, actually. But right now, Renzi is really going hand on the center. Dark Porygon has this artillery here, but there's a bunch of tanks surrounding this artillery, so it's a bit scary. He also has those two tanks, but the other tanks are really lagging behind here. I don't know why these tanks are kind of... one next to each other there. He gets some damage on this tank, the entire air moves in and kills some infantry, I don't know if that's what... It's the best move for entire air, in general you want to be killing the, the air units. The battlecopter comes in for Dark Polygon, he kills this tank that was low here. The twin tanks here moving, I don't know why these tanks were so close, maybe he made double tank and they both kind of went here, yeah, that's probably what happened, I think. Now Renzi goes in for this attack, but the 1 HP infantry actually dies to the other 1 HP infantry, he gets some stuff that was low here. He shoots the entire, which is pretty important because he has two battlecopters almost on the front lines, I mean this one just killed something. But he has another one coming, so he has three better copters, and I don't think... Oh, okay, Dark Porygon actually made another entire, but it's gonna take like two, three turns for it to do anything. Renzi is using the, the broken pipe scene to get some nice reinforcements going here with his tank. And he's mostly just making infantry on his strong side. He's really being able to overwhelm Dark Porygon with the unit count right now. Dark Porygon is almost close to his normal power again. <coughs> He's 
trying to pull back and kind of coalesce his forces here to defend, but it's really tough right now. He's really behind in unit count, but on unit value for some reason he's... I mean, on the end of, on, on the end of his turn he's even, so I guess they are both kind of even on army value, but Renzi has almost 10 more units. And it's all infantry, I think. I think Dark Paragon was a bit reckless with his infantry here, going too hard on the, on the HQ side. He already had this property and he was moving in here for some reason. Also, the tank that got in early for Renzi gave him a lot of control around here. And I think this helped on the engagement of the infantry walls. Now Renzi has his big infantry wall here and Dark Porygon doesn't, because he lost all of his infantry there. And he also can't capture much as well. He has like one guy here on the front lines, two guys I guess. Dark Porygon has three battlecopters right now. He's gonna kill this tank and almost kill this battlecopter, killing some infantry as well from Renzi on the right side. He gets this infantry on the mountain and Renzi is slowly trying to get this capture but I don't know if he's gonna be able to. This infantry has 2 HP and I think this infantry can just come down and kill him here. He gets 3 tanks actually. So the problem right now for Dark Porygon is he really doesn't have much infantry. I mean he built a bunch here but still Renzi has a whole lot and he needs those to spend his money as well, because if he doesn't spend, he already is behind in unit count. And he was ahead in income for a good amount of the match, but I think it was only like a thousand more. And since Rain Rainsy won so much here and had a bigger unit count, I guess it didn't matter this much, the little income lead Dark Porygon had. Right now, Dark Porygon, I mean, I don't know what he can really do. He can see this big ball here in the center and there's not much he can do to break it. I guess if he had a bunch of artillery and waited for his superpower and maybe made some infantry wall like around here with a bunch of, a bunch of imp artillery, he could maybe get a nice trade, but then there's all the the better copters, I don't know if that's possible really. Renzi actually got a, a medium tank that is almost on the front line so Renzi is gets this tank to shoot down this infantry. He's really I think he's a bit mad because he didn't get this capture the whole game, but it doesn't matter really. Now he's actually ahead on income after getting the whole center here. So by the end of the day, it didn't matter too much that Dark Porygon got those early captures here because he wasn't able to keep them because of the tank advantage Renzi had because of the, the pipe scene break. And now Dark Porygon goes for the superpower, I guess this is his last ditch effort. He kills the recon. With his tank, the, this mech is coming in, but doesn't do much. Jake power doesn't do anything for infantry. The entire gets a battlecopter, he gets another battlecopter, that's really nice. He gets a, a tank, that's good, but this infantry will shoot at the tank next turn. And he, uh, Renzi also has another tank here. The entire gets one infantry, but he can't quite get to the to the copter. I wonder if he, he attacked with the the tank, if he could one shot this. I mean, I guess it wouldn't really matter because he would have to one shot two infantry in a row if the tank should then get the the battle copter. The artillery actually gets shot at, almost gets killed. So that was a really nice engagement for Dekporio and actually he's really ahead in army value right now. 
but I think Reigns is gonna fight back now. Let's see how much damage he can get done as well. He has this medium tank coming in, one shotting. Oh, he didn't get the one shot on the, the tank. I think that was a bad roll, but I'm not sure. The battle copter comes in, does some damage. The artillery almost kills the entire. The battle copter gets some nice damage on the tank, and it's get, it gets finished off by the, the tank. The battle copter just comes his here to block, I think, the, the, the entire, but he can attack from here anyway, so it doesn't matter, I guess. <coughs> he now has two infant, uh, artillery here, and this one is repairing as well. So Renzi has a really powerful position right now, and he is ahead on army value after his turn. He still has this unit count lead. Dark Porygon gets a nice engagement, a nice... He finishes off the battlecopter with the infantry, then the mech does some damage to this tank, really nice, and this tank also almost kills this tank, the 3 HP tank here. He kills this infantry, which allows him to get this tank as well. He does some damage to the battlecopter. Now he's pulling back a bit with his units. The medium tank is still a problem here, like this tank is gonna probably get shot at with the, the artillery. Now Dark Horgon gets a, a medium tank as well. And he, in Renzi, gets the tank. I, I mean, a lot of damage on the tank with the, the artillery and the medium tank. The second one comes here, the battlecopter finishes off the, the tank, which means this medium tank probably can get this tank here. The entire air finishes off the tank. Right now they are actually pretty even on unit count for the most part, but after Raze buys I guess he's gonna be ahead. And army value Raze is slightly ahead, since now he's ahead on income a little bit, he also is gonna get more over time I guess. So actually, Dark Porygon is fighting back really well. But Raising isn't letting go of the center. The battle is still taking place here. I don't know if if Dark Porygon had like a, a recon here to draw some attention and some infantry, if he wouldn't be able to get some captures at least, but I guess he can't afford to spend any units on his weak side right now. And the pipe scene is still not broken here. I think he can't afford to break it as well. But it, this means it takes a lot of time to reinforce here with this, but for the most part it isn't too much of a problem because Dark Forego is mostly using, is using medium tanks now. At least he's trying to get to, then to the front lines, but I don't think any of his medium tanks shot anything for now. Race is getting some recalls on the front lines. And now Razer goes for the Neo tank. For thing, Dark Porygon doesn't have much of an answer for that for now. He has the those cap those copters that could be really useful next. But let's see. If Dark Porygon can fight back. The Battlecopter is actually going to his weak side as well. I don't know if that's a, a great move, but whatever. The medium tanks are getting closer and closer. This one medium tank is on the weak side of the north. He wants to try to break the pipe scene. Renzi sees this. Er Artillery here, this is really rough. He gets a really good shot. This infantry is also capturing here on oh, his strong side. He's killing some tanks from Dark Porygo. Now Renzi has four artillery here and a new tank and two medium tanks. I don't know if there's anything Renzi can do about it. He also has an entire almost ready to shoot here. 
He's really getting the, the artillery on position here to go forward. These artillery shoots at this infantry to stop the capture. I guess that's what he can do other than trying to repair this artillery, but I don't know if we will achieve anything anyway. Dark Porygon has some mechs coming in. And another medium tank here on the weak side, he's not trying to break the pipe scene, I guess. So this means those medium tanks will take like a long time to reach here. Those medium tanks from Renzi are destroying the medium tank from Dark Porygon right now, that's kind of sad. This infantry here is still capturing the city, he's gonna get it next turn probably. Or maybe this infantry gets killed. I mean, if Dark Porygon really wants to stop this capture, he can, I guess. And, oh, okay, the tank comes in, and now I think there isn't anything he can do to stop this capture. Also, he's losing almost everything on his strong side here. So things are looking pretty rough for Dark Portugal right now. The artillery is moving in for, for Renzi here, closer to his big tanks. The medium tanks and the new tank. Dark Porygon goes for the super power now, he kills this tank with the medium tank, this other medium tank is moving in, this one is kills the one shots actually the the other medium tank with 8 HP, that was a really nice trade. Mission complete. And he resigns, so Dark Porygon got really behind on unit count early game, I can't even remember when that happened exactly, I'm kinda Curious, I mean, they're pretty much even until okay, this turn where everything went wrong apparently for Dark Porygon. Renzi goes in, kills the recon, and these infantry and that other, yeah, those infantry here. I mean, he already got this capture, like this capture near the HQ. You're not gonna get that, you know, so he loses the one. I don't know if there was more stuff that he lost, probably, because only this wouldn't justify everything that happened. Also, Renzi gets his pipe scene tank to repair here, which is really painful. Yeah, I guess that, that was when the game really turned the tide, when this tank escaped from the pipe scene. So that was it. Renzi won against Dark Paragon, actually, and that was the first game from Group C, so... If you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time.